expression handles how many is minus g um, psi bar gamma u t a psi a a u plus g f a b c d u a nu a a u b a nu c and then there's another term which is an order g squared f a b c a b u a nu c f a d e a d mu a e nu right. so that's that's the um, interaction Hamilton used. This came from squaring the... That's right. The, uh, this the is field phase, strength. The Lagrange density is minus a quarter F A mu nu F mu nu A and um, you square that, I mean you, you multiply that out, mm -hmm. you keep the quadratic part as L0 or H0 and this is the, uh, this is what's the rest. Now the Fermion propagate is very much the same. It's, uh, say, I, what shall I use? I alpha of x psi bar j beta of y is integral p fourth k over two pi to the fourth. I over k slash minus m alpha beta delta ij e to the minus ik x minus y. And um, you might be puzzled by this, but there's a simple way of figuring out what that is. Namely, you take k slash plus m times k slash minus m. What you get is k slash squared minus m squared and this is k mu, k nu, gamma mu, gamma nu. And so this is, since this is symmetric, you can symmetrize this. Symmetric in mu nu. You can symmetrize this, and this is half the anti-commutator of gamma mu with gamma nu. And that gives you then uh, Do we know we have? Excuse me? We don't have a, we just have k slash minus m in the denominator of the propagator. Right, k slash minus m, yes. But we're calculating this, this other thing. Yes. Okay. Because, um, by the miracle of the division, um, so this is k squared minus m squared. Oh, I see. Because the fermion propagator usually had that k slash up top. Right. right. And so what happens is you then say that, um, uh, what do we want? We want k slash minus m. So you divide both sides by k slash minus m and by k squared minus m squared. And you get k slash plus m over k squared minus m squared is equal to 1 over k slash minus m. And so this is what you use here. So in other words, the actual form of this then that you use is if I switch say to p, it's d4, well I better say with k I guess d fourth k over 2 pi to the fourth i k slash plus m and now it's alpha beta divided by k squared minus m squared plus i epsilon delta i j e to the minus i p x minus y 
Okay, so that's the fermion propagator. The delta IJ is because if you have different flavors of fermions, they um, they only uh, they only work. I mean, they only match if, if they're the same. Otherwise, you get zero. Oh, announcement. Um, I checked with Sandra with. I don't know what you found out. <laughs> I forgot to ask. You forgot. <laughs> I was going to ask for backup, but um, one of the problems of assigning the same task to several people is the person that is so many others. In any event, uh, I asked Sandra, and she said that we can have room 5 at 5.30 on Monday. So 5 is better than 11.31. I will also talk with the person who's using this room to see if they would be, they would prefer to have room five, in which case we may switch. And as I say, you guys all got a couple uh, an email from me. Didn't you? About the Casimir operator? Yeah. So um, I did add a section of the book on the Casimir operator, which is fine. But the actual identity that we sort of stumbled upon is um, something that isn't direct, isn't simply related to the Casimir operator. But um, I found it in uh, as identity A38 in uh, Pesky. And um, so it, it, he says that it holds for the defining representation of SUN. Notice well, it's more general than what I gave. I gave a special case of it. All right, anyway, it's let me that's neither here nor there, though, for what we're doing now. All right, let's look at the gauge boson propagator, then that's zero time ordered product a a mu of x a b mu of y, and as we'll see on Monday you can eventually get this to look like this, minus i, eta mu nu, over q squared plus i epsilon, delta a, b, e to the minus i, q, x minus y. And again, it's diagonal in the color or flavor. In the and you really can't do anything with Feynman diagrams if you don't know, at least from first principles, if you don't remember what the fields look like, and since we have been using several different books, it's um, useful to, all right, now, this is A, P, S, and it would be I would be the color or flavor index. And then we'll have U of P and S. I actually left that out. I don't know if I can stick it in somehow. Um, and then we have the antiparticle P dagger of uh, P S I, V of P and S, and of course I just left out a phase factor. This is E to the minus I P X, and this is E to the I. And, and alpha is the spinner index? Excuse me? Alpha? Alpha is the spinner index, so this alpha would hang on this. Okay. Good question. Well, sure. Did I just give you M&Ms? You don't want more M&Ms, right? Well, these are peanut M&Ms. <laughs> <laughs> You said I is the flavor or color or something? Flavor or color, yes. And where did, why are we adding that now? Sorry. That's fine. Well, we're doing Yen Mill, so what we have here, for example, is this is I, I, J, J. Those are the flavor or color, depending on what it is, uh, indices of the spinner fields. 
and uh, the gauge fields are more obviously labeled. Okay. So this is what you'd have in the electroweak theory or in quantum chromodynamics. Okay, now what about A? Well, A, A mu of X is integral d cubed P over 2 pi cubed, 1 over the gamma the square root of 2 E P, sum on S, and now we have A of P, S, A, well, unfortunately I'm using a for three different things, capital A for the field, A for the annihilation operator, A for the color index. If you want to make it clearer, we can just leave. Okay, now what about plus um, a dagger of P S, let us say P, epsilon star mu of P and S, e to the I P X. Okay. All right, so that's the gauge for you. So let me just say we're doing Feynman diagrams. The uh, interaction Hamiltonian is a Hermion piece. And then two pieces of the gauge field, which come from this term, apart from uh, the quadratic piece, which we retain in each zero. And uh, there's a there's a uh, the, the fermion piece of the action gives you that. So the gauge group for QCD is SU three, right? Yes. For the electroweak theory, what is it? It's 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 SU two. SU2 cross U1. Uh-huh. Okay. And in fact, can you do, can you split up the SU2 left cross U1? So is the weak theory by itself described by this SU2 left? Like does it split up like that if I just want to describe QED or I just want to describe the weak theory? That would be nice, but no. <laughs> and 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 it, it, it for better or for worse. It's an SU2 left cross a U1. And then part of the SU2 left combines with part of the U1 to give electromagnetism. And the other part combines to give the interactions of the Z boson. We'll do that at some point. Um, I, can, I can say more about it today if I, if I finish this calculation. Is there this a question? Is, so the gauge bosons are still spin one, they just have an additional color charge now? Yeah. Can we have gauge bosons that aren't spin one? Um, no, the gauge bosons are always uh, spin one. At least in all the theories I've seen. So is the graviton that there I are boson? there are I mean they're, they're, the only other boson in the standard model the restriction is the Higgs boson and um, that's scalar right it's scalar but it does carry flavor um, does but, that the, but the purpose of gauge bosons is to is to this one have ten minutes yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, go go down Central to University, down uh, up University, uh, north on University to Lomas, and and then turn right on Lomas and go about a block until you get to Yale, and then turn left. Uh, and uh, the Physics and Astronomy Building is is just there uh, on your right. You have to go up toward a roundabout and then curl into the parking lot. 
And uh, it's room 184. Well, the, the, let's put it this way. You've got this north uh, 